All right. Good to see you guys. Howdy. Okay. Let's get started. So we are the Lunar Supply Pod Group from Clear. Oh, sorry about that. We are the Lunar Supply Pod Group from Clear Creek High School. Uh, my name is Grant Griffin. I'm Dylan McGuire. And my name is Wilbur Garcia. And let's get started. All right. So I'm going to be running down the phases of our concept development and uh, saying why we came up with each phase and why we eventually abandoned it and how that led us to our final design. Okay, so our first concept was just a basic like spherical design with padding on the inside and the outside to absorb the impact. And uh, we planned on launching it at a low angle with positive spin to also help absorb the impact. And we'll probably stick with that idea, but we scrapped the spherical design because uh, just a major weakness we thought it had was that if the pod does breach or if we which was a it was a configuration of multiple pods together pyramid pods that came together to form a saucer and we would uh, attach these pods with some type of adhesive which we uh, eventually decided on velcro but uh, we uh, again abandoned this idea because we believed it had too many vulnerability or vulnerabilities on landing on impact because there's like just too many sharp corners or places that if the pod landed it would have broken which um, led us to our third and final design which is we stuck with the pyramid pods because um, with the pyramid pod if it uh, breaks off and it's not going to roll anywhere and it's a very strong shape geometrically so we assembled these pyramid pods into a geodesic sphere, which uh, was one of the strengths we preserved from the, our original design. The spherical shape doesn't have a lot of weaknesses, not a lot of places it would land where the pods would take damage. It also preserved the strength of the second design with the multiple pods. So that if one pod breaks, we lose one pod, uh, that not everything is lost. And uh, we assembled all these pods inside of a net. So when it hits the ground and the pods disperse, they stay inside the net and it uh, helps absorb the impact when they break apart. All right, now I'm going to be running down uh, like the design of the individual panels and, the, uh, and what a pod looks like. So this is uh, the design of a singular panel. Uh, as you can see on the side, there's hinges and you, so you push two pods up against each other and then pop a rod in between the hinge and it folds up into a pyramid shape. And um, we chose the triangular shape for the pods because uh, it was very strong geometrically. So this is what one fully assembled looks like. As you can see, the hinges are aligned and there's rods through the hinges. Uh, but we ultimately uh, had to edit this design because there was a major stress point right uh, where the two parts of the hinge meet. So when the when the, it impacted the ground, we knew that the pod was going to probably break or at least get uh, deformed in that one spot. So we solved that problem. We solved that problem by going with the piano hinge design shown here, where there's it spreads the impact across multiple uh, multiple places of impact instead of just one point where the stress uh, all come, uh, like builds up. And uh, just the general dimensions we went with was like one yard for each side length equilaterally, but really we can make uh, we can make it any size and it still assembles into the geodesic sphere. We would just need to figure that out later down the road. I'm gonna pass it off to Wilbur now. So I'm gonna be talking about the materials and why we chose these materials for our pod uh, design. So for, for the netting that we're going to have around the actual uh, assembled geodesic sphere, we're going to have, we're thinking of having a Kevlar made net because the fabric inside of it is, has uh, tensile strength that's greater than steel. It's highly heat, re heat resistant and it also is highly versatile, which is actually one of the key points for our pods. Uh, for the actual uh, panels themselves, they're going to, we were thinking of making them uh, out of aluminum 6061 because they're, Compared to other uh, metals, they're very lightweight, has uh, have uh, great strength to weight ratio, and also because they, since they already have a protective oxide layer, they won't be susceptible to galvanic uh, corrosion because of atomic oxygen. 
So the actual pins for the hinges themselves are going to be made out of, uh, we're thinking of stainless steel rods and um, really because they're stronger than aluminum and that's probably what's uh, going to break if when they're going to impact. So we really needed something a lot stronger. And uh, once again, this is going to, with galvanization, it's going to be uh, not, it should not be susceptible to galvanic corrosion. So one of our key uh, points about our whole pod idea is that it's actually, the whole idea is we can actually, it's very reusable, it's reusability and versatility. So the actual pod themselves can actually be disassembled into separate panels. And you can, with these panels, you can uh, make a geodesic sphere, uh, geodesic sphere dome, uh, you can make some tilings, uh, uh, roads or uh, on the moon, or even some other constructive purposes. Next slide. And for, uh, so and that's just the aluminum and the Kevlar net them itself. So we, we're not expecting it to actually survive the actual impact. But if it does, what we're thinking is that it can unravel into a singular spool of Kevlar. And with that, you can use it as rope or some uh, port cables for, the, uh, for small structures or something like that. And I'm going to pass it off to Greg Griffin. I will be talking about our design process for the prototyping and modeling. So to create a prototype, we um, our first prototype we made out of half quarter inch thick plywood. Uh, it is half scale, so each side length is only 18 inches compared to a yard. And so with this model, um, we use PVC pipes to create the hinges. And in this design, you can see that we were still using the singular hinge uh, and not the piano hinge yet, but we later corrected that in another um, prototype. So in this model, you can see that we used pins that were held together at the top with a wire going through them. Uh, we later changed this design so that instead the wires would bend and interlock together rather than having something that needs to be untied so that it's very easy to take apart. And so here's a uh, image of our final wooden prototype. You can see that um, it has a key system on it. This one is labeled 1A. And what that can mean is that we have 20 pods in a set in the geodesic sphere. And those pods can be labeled 1 through 20 and have a code letter assigned to them so that it can denote what is stored inside that pod, which makes it easy to identify and store them without ever having to open it and look at the contents. So here's an example of another prototype we made. We made very small scale 3D prints of our model, which we later used as a mock impact test, which you'll see at the end of our PowerPoint. So in order to prototype the Kevlar, we used a simple woven crabs net in order to, um, in order to surround it and just get the general idea across, even if it doesn't copy the same strength. And show how yes, we use this in our impact test, which is at the end of the PowerPoint. Uh, here's a basic IDW of what a complete Kevlar net around the finished structure could look like. It's not very refined, but it is general for the idea of getting across. That, that didn't for, oh no, it did, okay. Okay, right, sorry about that. Okay, so finally about the dimensions of our individ each individual pod, the gross mass of each one that is without any contents inside of it is under 400 pounds, it is 384 pounds. Each pod has a about a two cubic foot volume. And for example, if it was filled with water, each pod would weigh about 515 pounds, which would bring the net weight up to around 10,000 pounds. The uh, square footage of each pod, the um, surface area, is around 55 square feet. And the approximate aluminum, simply the aluminum material cost of each pod, is only just under $200. Okay. All right. So we actually have, uh, so as you can see in that picture, we have, uh, like uh, Grant uh, previously mentioned, we have the to, uh, we actually previously, we have a pod lettering system. So uh, the number, like he said, represents uh, how many, which number of pod it is out of an assembly of 20, which is how many it takes to make the geodesic sphere. And the actual letters themselves would, um, this would be more refined, but as of right now, it's just very simple, just food, water, tools, materials, parts and stuff like that. Uh, sadly, because it, 
uh, we our pods won't be able to actually have like delicate materials or del like delicate robotic parts or something like that because we're intending on this to actually break and uh, obviously take the full impact force. All right, so we prepared an impact test. We have one test with the net to show off uh, what that is like, and we have one test without the net to show what an impact looks like when the net is not present. All right, so this one is with the net. I don't know if you guys can see that that well, but uh, everything stays intact. None of the pods were damaged. Uh, we had a pitcher from the baseball team throw it, so it was, we wanted it to be at least somewhat accurate with the speed. And this is the impact test without the net. The pods burst apart, which they would usually be contained in the net. You can see the pods spread out. And there's a picture coming up that shows that none of the pods were damaged. They were all, they all just broke apart like they, int they intended to. It absorbed the impact and our design worked as intended, at least in this uh, case. All right. Can you, the, can you guys play that again? I, I didn't see anything. All right. You want me to make it full screen? To, yeah, you, make it full screen. Is that full screen for you or no? That might no. be on a different screen. It's not sharing for us. Okay. All we're yeah, seeing is just the, the first uh, frame. Yeah. Glenn, uh, Glenn uh, you might need to start the video on your end. I can actually press to start the video on my end, which is really weird. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Whoa. I can watch yes. it. It's individual. Oh, Watching yourselves. <laughs> oh, so each of us needs to play it. That's interesting. Uh, that's, we haven't really expressed the team because uh, teams is weird. Yeah, teams is. Uh, we we thought that it would already wow. out of play, but. So, wow. Uh, okay. So wait a minute. What? While I've got it, and I, I was watching it. So the the first one, it had the net, and yeah. then the second toss, it did not have the net. Yeah. Is that that's right. That's correct. Okay. Um, we actually, after our PowerPoint, we wanted to do a live demonstration of like what our bundles look like. Um, since the video took up a little bit of our time, can we still do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. All right. We'll make it quick. Sure. Okay. Just turn off the PowerPoint. How do I? Um, we're trying to figure out how to turn the PowerPoint off and just have video. How do I do that? I'm not sure. Can you guys pull up the camera on your end? We don't know how. Uh, you're okay, to so to stop sharing, up next to your to the red leave button, there should be a, a white box with an X in it. Click the X, and that'll stop your sharing. Um, uh, we don't see it. There's no. Okay. Next to the leave, do you, do you guys have a, a leave. leave button? Wait, that's this that's match. this match. Um, hmm. I'll stop presenting right at there. Oh, okay. Okay, we found it. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Did you stop sharing in PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Right. Now can, can, you you can you see the okay. camera? Yes. All right. So, uh, really quick, we just want to show you what uh, the actual wooden prototype and everything looks like. Um, so. I'll lift it up. So right here is our wooden prototype right here. So you can see we have the lettering system outside and we have uh, these white strips are uh, Velcro and underneath these, uh, we have an actual foam that will also help uh, absorb some of the shock. Uh, It'll act as padding. Yes. Sure. And, then, and so you pull the pin. You can pull the pins out. The pins and they come out pretty easily, and then the pod just and opens pod up. Opens up. And you can do this with all four sides, so it would unfold yep. into a it flat. Can uh, unfold flat and act as tiling or roofing. And finally, uh, this is our 3D printed model. It's okay. um, it's uh, just something it's based. Just, on, uh, just basically. Uh, how uh, it would technically look like if we were to build this in that yep. full scale. And this is fully scalable. It can be any size that's required. Um, a closing note, uh, we do not have a simulation of this because uh, the interactions inside this uh, pod, whenever it impacts, is too complex for any of the software we could find. We asked around for months. We couldn't find any experts who knew how to do a model of the stress test on it. There's two just variables included in it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.